Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Smithfield United Church of Christ. In my presidential capacity, I want to remind everyone of the congregational meeting next Sunday following the service. Welcome to the first Sunday in Advent. And if you look towards the altar, note that the peace cranes that have been here for the past four years are no longer there. This is not a decorating choice. After Sunday, last Sunday, several of our congregants talked to me about sending the peace cranes on to United Church of Christ Church in Colorado Springs. So I boxed them up and wrote a letter, which I would like to share with you now. To the congregation of First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Dear friends, it is with hopeful hearts that we reach out to you in response to the tragedy at Club Q. We at Smithfield United Church of Christ understand the pain, shock, and be bewilderment with such senseless events. We are remembering the recent anniversary of similar events at the Tree of Life Synagogue here in Pittsburgh. Members of that congregation are friends, neighbors, and colleagues of ours. With each incident of gun violence in the United States, the words of Jeremiah 31.15 come to mind. A cry is heard in Rama, deep anguish and bitter weeping. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for her children are gone. After the tragedy at Tree of Life, a United Church of Christ congregation in Orlando, Florida, sent us these peace cranes. They were still grappling with the aftermath of the shootings at the Pulse nightclub. The cranes have hung above our altar now for four years as a reminder that we were and are not alone. After service on November 20, several of our congregants suggested sending these cranes to your congregation that you might know that you are not alone in this tragedy. God is good, even when we sometimes have a hard time believing it. Just last week, this, became, this poem became known to us. We share it with you. It's Jesus at the Gay Bar by J. Moon. Here he is in the midst of it, right at the center of the dance floor, robes hitched up to his knees to make it easy to spin. At some point in the evening, a boy will touch the hem of his robe and beg to be healed, beg to be anything other than this. And he will reach out his arms, sweat damp and weary from dance. He will cup the boy's face in his hand and say, My beautiful child, there is nothing in this heart of yours that ever needs to be healed. Words may seem hollow at this time, but in the season of Advent, our prayer is that you might find peace and comfort that comes from Jesus the Christ. Peace, the congregation of Smithfield United Church of Christ. We have changed the order of worship a little bit, so at this time I'm going to ask you whether you have prayer requests, I want to raise that in prayer. Um, if you have a health concern for yourself or anyone else. For my friend Lee Thompson, suffering from fourth stage cancer. <clears throat> Lee Thompson, as she's dealing with cancer. God in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Anyone else? I want to raise the awareness of the violence on the streets. Violence on the city streets and other places as well. God in your mercy. Your prayers. I want to raise a prayer for a family that's grieving today. Um, the loss of Catherine Day. She was a massage therapist, trigger point massage therapist, very good at what she did. She was also a teacher. She worked with me over 15 years, and Cheryl, who might join us later on, she, Cheryl knew Kathy from worshiping at the Wexford 
Methodist Church, Salem Methodist Church. So let us remember Kathy Day and her family in our prayers. God in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For my nephew Alex, who is struggling with some issues. Nephew Alex. God in your mercy. Hear our prayers. <coughs> want you to just pay attention to what's happening within your heart. Take a deep breath and let it go. Think about the peace that you feel within your heart. The peace that you wish to have in your life, within your community, and the whole world. As I say to you, peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us move around and spread the peace of Christ to one another. Please be seated.
How about that? How about that, you guys? The adults out there? What do you think about that? How can you be ready at all times? What's the trick? What, what do you have to do to be ready at all times? Any suggestions, Anne? You don't know. Listen to God, somebody said from behind keep the, me. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. What else? Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Be what else? Pardon? Be responsible. Be responsible. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> That's really cool. Be okay. responsive. Be responsive. Love one another. Love one another. Hmm. Well, how about all that, St. Matthew? That's a good start. Just remember you have to be ready at all times. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this message and for helping us to refresh our memories as to what it is you expect of us. <coughs> and these things are something we have to work on diligently while we wait for you to come. Amen. i 
you this morning. Can you all hear me? What? Oh, because I have one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening around here? Where is everybody? Pray for people who are on the roads today in this rain, coming back from holiday. Advent is the season of waiting and preparing. For my family growing up, preparing for Christmas began right after my father finished his Thanksgiving dessert. He immediately left the table, started bringing up the Christmas platform from the basement. There was furniture to be moved to make room, and then each day after that, I'm gonna 
turn this other mic off, I'm sorry. There. Each day after that, he and my mom continually worked on it to make the whole half of the living room a magical village with houses and churches and stores and people and animals, a farm, an airport, a ski slope, trains, bridges, a working water mill, and even a river with goldfish. <laughs> On Sundays, following we kids had parts to learn, carols to memorize for the big Sunday school program, and we made our lists for Santa. It was an exciting time for us of waiting and trying to be good. We had no problem waiting in hopeful expectation. It wasn't until I was in middle school that I heard about Jesus coming as recorded in the Advent texts that predict crumbling temples and some big catastrophic things that might bring desolation on the earth. And perhaps somebody, some of us will be scooped up to who knows where or why and perhaps become face to face with God with all our unrepentant sins exposed. Talk about putting the fear of God into us. It's enough to give us all nightmares, isn't it? There's a quote by Barbara Brown Taylor, who is a religious author and priest. Says, she said at one point, uh, when I saw her, I think we were on a retreat, and she said, we fail to wait in hope because we have learned to wait in fear. And as adults, think of the times that you have been waiting for something. Did you wait? Excited and happy, or did you wait in fear? Waiting gives us a chance to conjure up all sorts of negative predictions of what's coming. Negative results of a, of a medical test, for instance. Waiting, waiting for your father to get home. How about that? Have you ever been told that? Just wait till your father gets home. That puts the fear in you. And especially, we fear waiting when we are worried that God has found out what we've done. <laughs> now I believe that we cannot know the exact time or hour God will show up in our life. But I do not believe that God is highly invested in all sorts of threats and theatrical antics in order to make us fearful. Nor does God swoop down like a superhero to fix somebody or to correct a situation that has gotten out of hand. A favorite theologian and priest of mine that I've read um, consistently is Carlo Coretta. He says, God is the God who comes, not once, not twice, but at will over the years. And I have found that to be very true. God shows up unexpectedly and unassumingly 
So much so that we're hardly aware of the Holy Presence in our midst. God is a sower of seeds, seeds of faith. Some seeds fall onto good soil, and some seeds fall onto unresponsive soil. But our God is a patient farmer. God waits, God waters, God feeds, God prunes, God loves. I don't believe God ever quits on us. Although we may, with our free will, quit on God. Advent is the period of waiting, but I think perhaps it is God that does the waiting. Waits for us to develop an acknowledgement of our own need for God waits for us to develop an awareness of God's presence in our life. Although, unfortunately, the awareness of God's presence in our life is often revealed to us in hindsight. For instance, it was not until 1999 when my mom died, that I found my baby book. Anybody here remember what baby books are? It's when a mother has a little diary and she writes down first tooth, first step, first smile, how much she weighed. Well, I found that book and I went through it to read what she had to say about me. Hmm. <laughs> so, on the baptism page, she wrote this line. Linda was very still, wide-eyed, and seemed to be listening and understanding what the minister was saying. Hmm. That was just a thought that she had at the time. There were many years between my baptism and my ordination. But looking back over those years, I had so many prompts in that direction. One in particular was when I was walking home from high school in my senior year, and halfway up William Street, a thought of ministry came into my head, but it was fleeting because I was a girl. There were no women clergy, at least not that I was aware of. So I didn't pursue it at all until much later. And even then, it was because I was prompted by four ministers that we had the church at different times. The first week of seminary, I was out in the middle of the quad and I had my doubts. And I said to God, I think you might be calling me to do this. And I will try do it, but I need a lot of help because I cannot, I know I cannot do this by myself. And that was just in the middle of the first week when you're inundated with all of the syllabus, everything going on. The weight of it is enormous, at least it was for me. help came to me. Carlo Coretto was right. The God of Jesus Christ is the God who comes, who shows up unexpectedly,
to walk with those who are in need of support, direction, and yes, even correction. Psalm 139 has been my comfort for many years. It's a very personal psalm or prayer, and I recommend it to everyone I meet who are searching for confirmation that they are loved and cared for by God. It's recommended to myself because there are times when I don't feel God's presence. And so I pick that up. Well, now I don't have to pick it up. I just memorized it. But to feel that assurance of God's claim on a life. We will be referring to these verses of Psalm 139 throughout Advent. But today, I would like us to um, get comfortable. I want to do a little spiritual exercise with you. Are you, are you ready for that? Get comfortable. Close your eyes. Take a couple deep breaths. And repeat these words after me as if each one of us had penned them. And afterwards, we will sit with those words as we consider the feelings it may have brought to mind. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, even before the word is on my tongue. O oh Lord, you know it completely. You know it completely. You hem me in, you hem me in, behind, behind, and before, before, and lay your hand upon me. And lay your hand upon me. It is so high. It is so high that I cannot attain it. What was your experience? How did it make you feel? Chosen? Loved? Connected? Secure. Secure? Blessed? Embraced? Long ago, a young girl named Mary had an experience of God. A seed was planted, and she, out of faith, accepted an incredible offer to birth the child of God. I doubt she was totally aware of what was even happening to her. 
at the time. It's just like when we have a fleeting experience of the holy. We don't know whether to believe it was true or if we just imagine it. But it humbles us, doesn't it? It humbles us to have that feeling of God being with us, holding us dear. That God might consider us worthy of his time and his love. After the angel visit, Mary pondered, it says, pondered all these things that were happening to her. Maybe asking herself, what does this mean? What just happened? <clears throat> How will this happen? When will it happen? And more importantly, how will it change me? Today we wait in hopeful expectation that what we have experienced of the holy in our life so far was indeed real. We wonder, has God sown seeds in us that we have yet to discover? Is God planning a new path for us, something to help us grow and develop our faith in order that we can continue to become the people that God has called us, bore us to be? So let us wait, like Mary waited, in hopeful expectation. Let us wait without fear <coughs> and think of all of the pregnant possibilities that are within us, where God can come and show us God's glory, God's love, and to know that God is the God who comes. So watch, wait, so that you can feel the experience of God coming to you in fleeting little moments of every day. And the people say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> you to go back to that place that you reached when you're doing that meditation, when you felt the love and the security within. God of love and grace, we greet you on this first Sunday of Advent with Christmas lights, evergreens, and Advent wreath. In this beautiful sanctuary, we have enough symbols reminding us of the light and life that you bring to us all. Your endless love and the promise of life eternal. We cling to these symbols and meanings as we sing our hymns and do our meditations. This last week, we gathered around with our loved ones, the Thanksgiving table, remembering all that we are thankful for in our lives. We heard from one another our gratitude for life, our love of nature, our gratefulness for health 
had all sorts of comforts in life. We remembered people who need basic necessities as well as healing and peace in their lives. Today we honor you, O oh God, as the one who knows our needs and our aspirations. You sent to us Christ Jesus in the form of a fragile, small infant to restore us and offer us hope. Your love, O oh God, we experience each and every day as we struggle with worries, uncertainties in life. We try to get over guilt and shame and wish for a clean start. Our limitations in time and energy make us frustrated. We realize that we harbor hurt and resentments as we begin our journey towards this manger. Offer us possibilities to let go of anything that stops us from going forward towards your love and your light. We pray for all local and national agencies addressing hate and prejudice in general and gun violence in particular. We remember now communities healing from gun violence in Colorado Springs, Virginia and Southern Arizona. Ukrainian people are now surviving without power, water and heat as they deal with continued Russian showings in southern and eastern regions. We hear about unrest and protests in China against their strict COVID policy and their wish to move towards more democratic reforms. People in Italy are affected by a mudslide in Ischia. We honor now the work of our local agencies dealing with mediation, crisis intervention, as well as offering food and shelter to those who desperately need these services. We thank you, O oh God, for guiding us as a church so powerfully to continue your mission in the middle of this great city. You raised from our midst faithful and dedicated members to do remarkable things to continue the work ahead of us, bringing you the glory. Now hear the prayers that we raise within our hearts. Our prayers for our loved ones. Our prayers for all those who requested for our prayers. Gracious God, hear all our prayers, our spoken prayers, as well as our silent meditations. For in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may turn to your bulletin for the prayer of confession. <laughs> Let us join together. Merciful God, you know, know that, that you love us, us and that, that you call us to fullness of life. But around us and within us, we see the brokenness of the world and our ways. Our success Our progress does not satisfy. Our prosperous land is not the promised land of our longing. Forgive our willful neglect of your work, our insensitivity to the needs of others, and our failure to feel the spirit within us. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus. Thank God for this grace in which we stand. All glory to God. Amen. Let us together say the prayer that Jesus taught us. 
our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
What we've been brought up is piece pals that are crocheted and knitted, and a whole bunch of matchbox cars, and they're all on their way to Uganda. So one of my coworkers does mission trips to Uganda, a small remote village, and this particular mission trip is a medical mission trip. So he's gonna, he has a sister church there that he's visiting. They're in the process of building wells and building schools, and he'll visit the, out, the outer villages and apply, apply medical treatment for something called jiggers, which, take a look at it, it's seriously gross, um, and that's as far as we need to go into it at church. <laughs> so he's going to be doing the medical stuff, but he runs into all sor sorts of kids, and mostly the girls want the Peace Pals, and the boys want a matchbox car. And so each matchbox car is going to be given to at one boy, and he'll have one matchbox car for his life to play with. And those cars are going to drive miles on the roads. <laughs> so that's where these are going. The Peace Pals will go with the girls. Um, I know, strict gender rules, I'm over it. And what they're also going to he'll look at is he's brought Peace Pals in the past, and he'll go to villages he's never been to before, and they'll be there. So, we don't know where they're going, but it's going to be many more miles than any of us expect. So, thank you. pals they are they're sort of soft and they're little figures like people and they're all different colors and all different kinds the women's fellowship makes them the women's fellowship makes them they meet on Thursdays and uh, we are so blessed to be able to have so many I mean all those boxes full of peace pals and then matchbox cars so I think it's uh, wonderful for our church to do that. Would you please bring the offering forward so that I, so we can bless all these wonderful gifts that we have gathered.
they might not have seen before. We ask you to bless each one of these things and each child that they, that are receiving them. Help them to know that they are loved, they are thought of, by God and from people so far away from the country in which they live. And now let us pray together. As we enter this season of Advent, O God, receive these gifts and direct their use. Let them be seeds of hope here at Smithfield to our neighboring community and the wider world. Amen.